Let's take a moment and we'll check out the Bluetooth settings on your Pioneer Nex head unit. Even though your particular receiver may have buttons on the side or across the bottom like this one, the on-screen operation in this demonstration is identical for the following Pioneer Nex models. AVH 4100 Nex, 4200 Nex, and 4201 Nex. AVIC 5100 Nex, 5200 Nex, and 5201 Nex. AVIC 6100 Nex, 6200 Nex, 6201 Nex. AVIC 7100 Nex, 7200 Nex, 7201 Nex. AVIC 8100 Nex, 8200 Nex, and AVIC 8201 Nex. The first thing I want to do when I check out the Bluetooth settings on the head unit is I want to make sure that I have a phone connected. And I have a couple of different ways to do that. I can touch the uh, telephone button here. That tells me that my Nexus 5 phone is connected. I can hit the X here. Or I can hit the gears. And I can go down to the Bluetooth settings. But you can see the Bluetooth settings are grayed out. So we'll need to fix that. And we'll fix that by engaging the parking brake. When we engage the parking brake, you can see the Bluetooth settings now become available. First thing we see here is the connection uh, menu. Let's open the connection menu. And here, uh, we'll use the connection menu to search for other devices. So if I'm looking to search for other devices, I can touch the, the uh, magnifying glass button up here, and that will search for other devices. Be sure that if you're searching for other devices, like other phones to connect to, that the phone's Bluetooth screen is up and active so that the phone is visible to the head unit. Uh, and also, if I want to uh, uh, delete this device from the head unit's memory, I have the trash can right here so I can get rid of it. Uh, connected or paired devices will show right here. The connected device will show that it is actively connected. We'll go back up. Next up is Auto Connect. Then Auto Connect, we can switch on or off. Right now, I'm going to be sure to keep Auto Connect switched on. That means that after I have paired my device, my phone to the head unit and taken my vehicle for a drive. When I come back to the vehicle and start it up, the auto connect uh, system will automatically find the phone. The phone and the head unit will find each other and automatically reconnect. Next up is visibility and visibility can be switched on or off. You want to be sure to keep visibility switched on, especially if you use the auto connect feature. Uh, if you are searching from your phone and can't find the head unit, check this setting, Visibility, to make sure that the head unit is visible to other Bluetooth devices. Next up is the PIN code, and the PIN code default is 0000. You can change the PIN code uh, here to another setting if you want to, but most modern phones don't require a PIN code uh, to be connected through Bluetooth. Older phones may, but most modern phones you won't use the PIN code uh, setting. Next up is our device information. Let's open that. This gives you specific information about the device. This is an AVH4200 Next, and this is the Bluetooth address. Let's go back up, and we'll scroll down here a little. The next thing we see is auto answer, and right now auto answer is switched off. You can switch auto answer on if you want to, and that means that the head unit will automatically connect your phone call when a phone call comes in. Most of the time I like to check the caller ID to see if I want to answer that call before I answer it. So I'm going to leave auto answer switched off. Then we have the ringtone. Uh, the head unit has its own built-in ringtone. Uh, and that ringtone you will hear when you get a phone call. If you don't want to hear that ringtone, you can go in here and switch the ringtone on or off. Next up is invert name. And with invert name, this will change the, uh, the first to last, last first names in your phone book. So if your phone book, for some reason, is importing the names backwards into the head unit, using the invert name switch here may help with that function. For right now, I'll say no to that. We'll scroll down a little further. Next up, we have Bluetooth memory clear. If you want to dump all the information out of the Bluetooth in the head unit, you can do that with the Bluetooth memory clear function here. Next is the Bluetooth software update. Occasionally, Pioneer will issue a software update for the Bluetooth function of a given head unit. Be sure to download that Bluetooth software update from pioneerelectronics.com and put that onto a USB thumb drive, insert it into USB port number one. 
USB port number one and start the Bluetooth update process right here. We'll go back up and finally we have the Bluetooth version information. When a Bluetooth software update is issued, be sure to check your device version information to see if that Bluetooth uh, software update is required for your particular device. When you're done with these settings, you can hit the X to escape.